love buying from you. So much that they literally get a physical high. I'm Robert Poole. Welcome to the Growing Your B2B Small Business Show. You know, getting your customers high and giving that kind of pleasure during a sale sounds ludicrous, I know. But stick with me, and in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how we do that, how we elicit that feeling. And also, you want to stay to the end of the video because I'm going to give you specific action tips, of course, uh, as, as well. I appreciate it if you rate and subscribe and comment on the video and let us know. Um, you know, I answer all the feedback personally. And if you want to get on the VIP list for like show inside secrets and other resources that are not available to the public, uh, go ahead and hit the link below in the description and you can get on that VIP list. You're not going to get spam. You're just going to get resources that come out. So you ever uh, feel like, you know, a customer is just barely buying from you and not because they want to because, you know, they feel like they have to for some reason? Or have you been in that sales situation where you just kind of begrudgingly buy even though you're like, ugh, I don't really want to, but I really need this thing, so I'm going to buy it in spite of the salesperson? Well, that's because the salesperson didn't do their job right and they didn't give you that pleasurable feeling that should come with all sales. And we're going to talk about in this video how exactly we elicit that and how we give our customers pleasure to make them love buying from us. You know, in my early days of selling, you know, as a young man, uh, people would, you know, buy from me. And, you know, sometimes it'd be a pleasurable experience, sometimes not. And I could really never figure out why it was, you know, uh, did they just connect with me personally, you know, because like, I my great personality or whatever. And uh, I knew that wasn't the case. And to be good at sales and to be able to stick with it for any period of time, you know, you've got to get some gratification out of it. You've got to get some fulfillment out of what you're doing and feel like you're actually serving and making people's lives better. And yet, if people are just buying because they have to or in spite of you and you know it, you know, that's, that's not the way you want to come to work. And that doesn't motivate you to continue in your career. And, you know, I remember there were times when I was just like, I, I don't know if I can do this, you know, because it's just I feel like I'm pulling teeth. and. You know, people would just feel like they're, I can tell that they're buying not because of anything I've done, just because just they're desperate for the product or service I was selling or some other reason that I couldn't quite figure out, but I knew it wasn't a pleasurable experience for them. And of course, I knew because I could see it and I had felt that same, you know, pressure when buying things that I knew I needed, but I didn't really like the salesperson. I didn't want to buy it, um, but I kind of had, had to buy it. And it was really frustrating because I didn't know what was the difference between the two. How, did, how was it even possible to get somebody to, you know, on demand buy something and enjoy it? Well, you know, the good news is I started to study human psychology and eventually uh, like a light bulb went off and I realized, geez, yeah, it is possible. Um, and you can actually do it on demand. So you can give people the pleasure and enjoy the sales process as well as serving them, giving them a solution that's going to change their lives and make it better uh, and enjoy doing it at the same time. I mean, that's what, you know, the perfect scenario in sales. You know, I mean, if you can relate to where I was stuck, you know, um, you know, you sell something and you can just tell that somebody, you know, um, doesn't, is not enjoying the process and they just like want it over with, you know, the time or like, they just want to get out of there. And again, we've all experienced that as, you know, people who were being sold to. And if you can certainly see it because you can identify it. You know, and it was extremely frustrating. I'm, I'm sure if you've sold for any period of time, you run into that, you know. And, you know, the problem is that not only do they not enjoy buying the process, it's like those people are not going to refer their friends and family and their coworkers because it's a painful process. And who wants to put, you know, people you care about through a process like that? And, you know, talk about repeat business. If you sell a, a product or a service that, you know, uh, you want them to come back and buy more, good luck with that because they're just, they're going to find somebody else to purchase that product or service with, again, unless they absolutely have to, because um, you're the only choice, and most of the time, we're not the only choice. And so we are competing. And so if we don't do that, then, you know, uh, it's just like pulling teeth to get somebody to renew our services or not to quit if we're using a service for the long run. Uh, and certainly, we're not going to get referrals out of it again. So, you know, if it's done wrong, boy, it can really, you know, drag on you, not only the lack of sales, the lack of renewals, but just, again, back to your whole mentality as a salesperson, your confidence. Uh, and so, but if there's a way we can do that, and there is a way, uh, which I discovered, like I said, when you understand human emotions and what's going on with the physiology in the human body, you can make this happen on demand. Uh, so it really is a fantastic way to change things, and we're going to talk about that in this video. 
So what this comes down to is understanding the chemicals and the hormones that are going on in our bodies and our brains and figuring out what's triggering what emotion and how we get the uh, release of those particular chemicals or those hormones uh, you know, at any particular time. And if we use them right, we can make it a hugely pleasurable process going through. If we don't, uh, you know, uh, you're in trouble and you're gonna have that same painful experience or your customer's gonna have it, the same painful experience you've had. You know, and you know, this is not theory. Uh, we've all experienced this. And as I go through this and explain some of these different chemicals and, and how they react, you're gonna go, oh yeah, now I know why I felt this way or now I know why I could tell that the prospect suddenly became nervous or uninterested or just flat turned off uh, because the release of these chemicals was done at the wrong time. But the good news is once we learn about them, we can see it happening in real time and we can correct and we can fix it. So, you know, let's say, you know, we understand this now. And so instead of turning off potential prospects, we're turning them on and we're able to actually trigger those feelings of pleasure. And suddenly they're referring their friends to you. They're referring family and coworkers. Um, you know, they're sticking with you. They're loyal. They're bragging about you to other people. You know, when, whenever that comes up in conversation, oh yeah, you got to totally use these guys because of what a pleasurable experience it was. And it doesn't even come down to your product. People will oftentimes start referring, you know, their friends and colleagues before they even try to use your product. But they had such an enjoyment, such a pleasurable experience buying from you that they want others to have that same pleasurable experience. So, I mean, it can literally change your business, change your sales, and, you know, change the quality of the client you get and the interaction with them. I mean, wouldn't you like the stress of not having to worry about, you know, people wanting refunds and chargebacks and buyer's remorse and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Instead, you get people who are loyal, who are referring people, who stick with you for the long time and who are your little mini salespeople out there getting business for you. So it can really dramatically revolutionize your business just by a few small tweaks and, you know, you can figure out how to use these chemicals at the right time and it will absolutely blow you away. Okay, so let's get into some specifics. Um, you know, think about a time when, you know, maybe you were in the middle of a sale, you were talking to a prospect or whatever, they seemed happy, they're joking around and, you know, they're smiling and they're like, oh, this is great. Uh, and then something, bang, in, a, in just in a second, the expression on their face changes, their whole body changes and you realize, uh-oh, something just happened. And suddenly they sit back and, you know, or you can hear them on the phone, they suddenly become silent. Anything, all those triggers that we pick up immediately as human beings, and we realize, uh-oh, something just went wrong, I'm about to lose the sale. And if we don't know how to fix that, we're in trouble. So, you know, and think about the opposite, you know, a time when, you know, um, maybe a prospect was just moving along, they were enjoying themselves, you were enjoying the process, you know, um, and by the end of it, you know, you felt like you made a friend, you could tell they really liked you, you know, was close to, hey, do you want to come over for dinner, you know, type of relationship. Uh, and it's completely different. And then we've, of course, also, both of us has probably been on the, the other end of that when you're buying something and, you know, it's just painful. Uh, and yet the other thing, when you feel like you've made another friend with a salesperson. So the two opposites. And so the question is, you know, what's the difference between those? And what it comes down to is, again, emotions, which are driven by chemicals in our body. Um, you know, technically they're hormones, but I like to call them drugs because it just, well, sounds more fun. But, um, you know, uh, so don't get technical on me. So we're, we're going to go over what I think are probably the main five uh, drugs that, are, that we want to elicit during the sales process and how we can use these uh, to actually give the customer an experience that they actually enjoy uh, and it helps them move along that process. Again, you know, if you're not giving them, you know, if you haven't done the pre-qualifying, you don't know that this is actually a good thing for them and that they actually need this product or service or that's going to benefit their lives. We shouldn't be doing it in the, start, the first place because that turns you into, you know, a con man or con woman, not a salesperson. But as long as you're convinced that it's the right thing for them, then you have a moral obligation to help them through this process. And oh, by the way, help them enjoy this process. So let's do that. Um, and so let's talk about each of these specific uh, chemicals and, and how they can be used. You know, the first one, uh, which you know, a lot of people are aware of, and it's very common, uh, it's called dopamine. And dopamine is like what we say is the, uh, for lack of a better term, the pleasure drug. 
Um, it, you know, this can be anything small from, you know, just some, you know, enjoyment over you bite into that chocolate cake and suddenly your brain goes, ooh, that feels good, you know. Um, sex, you know, of course, is a big dopamine hit. Um, any kind of something that's funny, that makes you laugh, um, something that just gives you a, a real pleasurable feeling. And that's why, you know, you know illegal you know, drugs like narcotics um, give you a huge dopamine boost. And that's why they're so addictive, because when it comes to dopamine, our brains just love it. It's massive pleasure, which is what we all crave. And that's a good thing. It's not, you know, um, it's not a bad thing, um, but because it helps us make decisions and make the right decisions sometimes. Um, but, you know, it's, it's the same reason that today with our, you know, our smartphones and everything, all, you know, the average person checks their, their phone. I've forgotten what the number is, but it's some huge number, like 60 times a day or something. And yet, you know, people like um, the experts at companies like Facebook and, and other large companies that have studied how users use their, their websites, they know that clicking on a certain button gives you a hit of dopamine. Being able to accomplish something gives you a hit of dopamine. So it's these little mini hits, you know, just looking at your phone and finding out something new, checking your Facebook or whatever, checking your email gives you a little mini dopamine hit and that's why it's so addictive and that's why we, we actually have a problem with everybody sticking their face in their phone, you know, and not talking to each other. You know, if you've ever been into a, a restaurant and you see a couple and their kids in there and all four of them, you know, are looking at their phones or whatever, um, you know, that's a dopamine thing is because it's so enjoyable and it's so addictive. Um, you know, and so, you know, in the sales process, we want to be able to give people some of that dopamine hit. Uh, because we all need it. We need that pleasure to move through daily life. Um, you know, so the question is, you know, how do we um, actually elicit that dopamine in the sales process? So, you know, a dopamine can be used, you know, um, in a variety of ways. You know, it's the, you know, it's heavily used in, you know, the hook part of the HSC model and, you know, um, giving somebody some initial pleasure to get their attention, you know, uh, because again, we all crave that. Uh, and, you know, on another uh, episode, I'll talk about how we specifically integrate these chemicals into HSC. But for now, let's just understand what they are and the power of them. Uh, because, again, we all want them. They're natural. They're occurring in our brains anyway. So we might as well give our prospects um, and our customers some of that hit that they're, they're dying for, that we're all dying for on a daily basis. And it's not a bad thing. Um, and so what's next? You know, we've got... And this is, well, and this is technically not a pleasure drug, so I would say four out of the five uh, drugs we're going to talk about are more pleasure. But, you know, the next one is, um, is a little bit of a more of a stress hormone, but again, this is super important in the sales process, uh, and that's cortisol, another one you may have heard of or not. And cortisol is basically the stress drug, if you will. So it's our fight or flight type of response when we hit that, when something scary happens, something stressful happens, all of a sudden that those cortisol levels in our body rise because our, our body is trying to get ready to deal with a stressful situation. Uh, whatever, you know, it's a life-threatening situation or just, you know, um, you know slamming on your brakes or, or whatever, or even something small, just a, a thought that, oh, geez, what happens if, you know? Um, and we all go through that. And the problem where you see that prospect suddenly turn off uh, and not want to listen and want to get out of there quickly when they get uncomfortable, that's what we're talking about. That's cortisol. And so, you know, the question is, how do we use that? Uh, we don't want to use it in a negative way because, you know, we don't want it to be a painful process. So um, when they're going through the, the sales process, using cortisol, using a, a little bit of it uh, is natural because we experience it every day, all day long. Um, it's just we need to use it at the right point in the sales process because if we use it at the wrong point and we elicit that and get our customers to feel that cortisol all of a sudden, guess what? They're going to be permanently turned off unless we provide an antidote to that and use that to lead them to the next part of the sales process. So cortisol, although it's not pleasurable, it's actually a critical part of the sales process. Um, and so speaking of, you know, the antidote, so what do we do? And this is one probably everybody's heard of, you know, uh, endorphins. And endorphins are basically painkillers. Give my handwriting. Um, endorphins are painkillers, and they're sort of the antidote to that stress because uh, cortisol releases all those stress hormones and oh geez, what's going to go on? That anxiety, all those th those feelings that you may have. 
Uh, and endorphins, that's why, you know, endorphins, they talk about endorphins are released during exercise, for instance. The, uh, the quote, runner's high, that's endorphins because it's painkiller. Because if you were running along and you're running a marathon, um, and or a long distance, for any long distance for that matter, and, you know, your muscles are going through that intense stress, if there wasn't another chemical to kill some of that pain, you'd never make it. Your body would shut down because your brain would say, this hurts too much. Uh, and that's why sometimes too, you know, um, you know, you've, you'll do things where you're um, really into the moment and you're, um, you don't realize, you know, the, the stress that you're under because you're just focused on the moment and something else and those those endorphins are covering up that cortisol release in you. That's why sometimes, you know, um, people go into shock when they get injured. It's the endorphins which are covering up what's going on with all that stress with the cortisol. So again, we've got to be able to figure out how do we use those endorphins with someone? How do we get them to, to release those endorphins in their brain so that they realize, oh, uh, I can cure this cortisol. I can take this pain away. Um, and again, that allows us to get them through the potential pain of making a decision, making change, which is scary, which creates cortisol, and give them an antidote to that. Give them, make them get through the pain uh, as a painkiller. So that's the third one. The, uh, the fourth one, uh, serotonin. And serotonin is sort of um, our happy drug, if you will. Uh, you know, it's, um, it's funny because, uh, you know, even think about the actual pharmaceutical drugs like Prozac and what do they call it, a serotonin reuptake inhibitor or whatever, but basically it means it allows more serotonin to get into your body. And because it's, it's an anti-depression type of thing. Um, and the reason for that is because serotonin, again, is sort of our happy drug, kind of like, oh, you know, everything's going to be okay, you know, I've solved this problem, you know, handled, um, you know, the, uh, you know, I don't have to worry about this anymore type of feeling, you know, it's like life is okay, you know, type of thing. So it's our happy drug. And again, um, if we use that properly, then we allow our, our prospects to go through a sales process and they go, oh, whew, the solution has solved my problem. I feel so much better about life. Um, I mean, don't we want our prospects to come out of the other side of the sales process and the buying process to go, oh, I, you know, I feel much better now. I'm going to have a great day because this happened. I mean, that's the kind of response that we want our customers to walk away from being happy, you know. And, you know, and then what's the last one? The last major um, one in um, uh, the five major chemicals in selling, uh, let's see, I'm spelling this wrong, oxytocin. And oxytocin is, is commonly known as the love drug. And, you know, what does that mean? Of course, it's, it, it's released generally, you know, um, it's not so much a sexual thing, although it can, can be that, but it's more of a, you know, um, a relationship type of chemical. It's a feeling of connection with other people. So putting your hand on somebody's shoulder, you know, um, you know like I said, a non-sexual touch whatever can release that oxytocin. Um, feeling part of a group um, can release that oxygen, like you belong, like, hey, I'm connecting with other people, you know, because that's one of our deepest human needs to be able to connect with others. So if we have that oxytocin, um, we're allowing ourselves to connect with other people. And it can be, you know, let's say you're selling, um, you know, some kind of widget um, on the internet. It's like, well, how, how do you, how does that come in contact with, or how is that relevant to, you know, connecting with other people, for instance? Well, you know, if you buy that widget and you become a user of that product, you know, if a, a smart company will build a community around that um, and allow you to do just like Apple does, which is what one of the smart things that Apple has done is created a community of people where people identify as an Apple user and people feel part of the big group. And when they feel part of the group, even if they're sitting at home behind their computer, they feel connected to others because, hey, I'm an Apple user. Or, you know, or I'm this, you know, it's an identity thing. And so oxytocin allows us to feel part of the group. So again, you know, you've got dopamine, the pleasure drug, cortisol, the stress drug, endorphins, painkillers, um, serotonin, the happy drug, and oxytocin, the, the love drug, the connection drug. And so all of these, if we don't use these in the proper place in the sales process, we'll really get ourselves in trouble. And it goes back to the example that I was talking about at the beginning. 
that you know the difference between the pleasurable sales process where you're just happy and you know you go through the process with somebody and they walk away from it feeling great and they're telling their friends and, and coworkers, um, or the opposite when they just want to get out of there because they can't stand it it's just painful um, and you know so it's and it's using these chemicals and using them in the the right time during the sales process not eliciting you know the cortisol at the wrong time not wasting the dopamine at the wrong time cre and using all of these to create that pleasurable sales process so you know, we'll go into these in a later episode, we'll go into details how these fit into the HSC model and how we trigger these at the exact right time. But for now, just understand if we integrate these and we think about in our sales process, all the emotions as somebody's going through our sales process and look at it and go, hey, you know, this part, they might be triggering cortisol. So we need to figure out how to give the endorphins to them to follow up with that because if we don't solve that cortisol problem right here in this sales process at this stage, we're done. That's where we're going to lose all the sales. And you know, if we're going to look at our sales process, if there's a point where we're losing people, it's most likely because we're doing something wrong here. We're using one of the drugs in the wrong place. We're, you know, we're using cortisol without endorphins to fix it, or we're leaving off the oxytocin so they don't feel connected to others. You know, um, or they're just not getting enough dopamine. It's not pleasurable enough. So all those things. Think through your sales process. Just go line by line, go through you know, your sales copy, if it's on a web page, your script if you're talking over the phone, or what you're saying in person, how you're telling your stories, what you're saying in your hooks, you know, all that stuff, you know, how you're closing, you know, trying to close somebody without making sure that these chemicals are illicit at the right time, you know, that's a recipe for disaster. That's why the salespeople hate selling is because they try to close when they haven't fixed and used these chemicals properly. So again, we're gonna talk about that in the HSC process in a later episode, but for now, focus on going through your, your sales process and figuring out if you're using these and if you're using them at the right time. So again, um, I appreciate uh, your taking the time today uh, to listen to this episode and you know, take action on this because this is make a huge difference in your life. I mean, think about it. If you're a year from now and you've implemented some of these ideas, you've looked at your sales process, You've made sure that your customer, you know, has a pleasurable experience. Um, you know, the difference in the quality of experience they have will directly affect the quality of your experience and definitely your pocketbook. I mean, at the end of that year, if you're suddenly, you know, your sales went from, you know, a 20% conversion rate to a 50% conversion rate, how much money is that in your pocket, you know, in terms of pure profit? How much is, is that actually affecting your personal income and how much you're able to change your family's life and your life? And oh, by the way, your customer also enjoys it and they're out there being many salespersons for you. You know, I mean, you can't beat that. That's about the holy grail of selling. So take this um, you know, information and use it in your day-to-day -day sales process. And again, you know, I'd love to see your comments. Um, so please comment on the, the video below and let us know your thoughts and I always answer comments personally, and um, you know, please rate and review the show, of course. Um, and if you want to get on our VIP list uh, to get more inside resources, more depth, more videos that are not open to the public, um, please you know, click the link below and you can sign up for that. Um, and uh, appreciate your time today, and I will talk to you.